Hey everyone, welcome back to Teal Overlander. Today's episode is a little different from my usual content. Well, not really different per se, but with a vehicle you're probably not expecting to see on this channel. Today we're doing a hardware upgrade to the Ford Sync Entertainment System, which adds Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So, don't go away. My usual viewers probably already know my Bronco situation, and because of that, recently I became the new owner of the sexy black 2015 Ford Fiesta hatchback. Years ago I owned a metallic green 2011 Fiesta and I just loved that thing. Great on gas, edgy styling, solid and reliable, and really well equipped for a subcompact. Ford literally changed the game when it came to cheap econo boxes when they introduced the Fiesta to the North American market. This, my 2015 model, is a mid-cycle refresh to the original release, with fog lights and an updated Aston Martin inspired grill on the exterior, and a redesigned center stack with six and a half inch color screen on the interior, which was a huge improvement over the original four inch monochromatic screen. Upgrades to the Fiesta also included optional sat nav, automatic climate control, and automatic headlights, and of course, 2017 and later models had the Sync 3 and backup cameras as standard equipment. My 2015 model, however, has the older My Ford Touch infotainment system, which isn't terrible. Actually, it's pretty terrible. It's utterly. Fortunately for me, later model year sync units fit right into my older generation head unit. In fact, the APMI, or Accessory Protocol Interface Module, the brains of the whole thing, will work from a Ford Escape, a Focus, an Eco Sport, and probably even a new Bronco Sport, which still uses the same Sync 3 hardware. So after scouring the wrecking yards and coming up empty handed, I eventually found a unit on eBay that I went ahead and purchased. Well, this past Friday, my eBay purchase finally showed up at the door. Lexi seemed just as excited about it as I did. Well, not exactly a cheap used option. Simply gaining Android Auto functionality makes this upgrade entirely worthwhile in a daily driver. For this upgrade, it was necessary to grab both the module and the screen. The display is a newer capacitive touchscreen, similar to what you have on your cell phone, and is much more responsive than the older display in the car. As you can see, the My Ford Touch system is a little dated looking, and the graphical interface just isn't intuitive or user friendly. The first order of business is removing the screen cowl, which is securely held in place with a handful of clips. Lifting it up and back is the direction it needs to go to clear the dash. Once the cowl is removed, we can see the screen and module are bracketed together and held in place with four T25 Torx screws. Once the screws are removed, lift up and flip over the unit to access the wiring plugs. The large plug has a safety lever that needs to flip over to release it, and the USB plug is a typical button prog that needs to be depressed. Once disconnected, the unit is clear to be removed. What makes this upgrade so convenient is the new unit is plug and play, using the same connectors as the old one. Before buttoning everything back together, I wanted to power it up to make sure everything worked. This being from a wrecking yard after all. The Ford boot screen, which is a good sign, and then a USB error pops up. Apparently the 2016 and newer modules expect to see a newer USB outlet in the center console, but for Android Auto, the original plugs work fine, despite the error. If you're wanting to use Apple CarPlay, however, the 2016 or newer USB harness is needed. Testing out a USB thumb drive with some music on it, it seems to be working just as fine.
This module that I got came out of a 2019 Fiesta, so it's already running version 3.0. Not bad. However, for the Fiesta, over-the-air updates are no longer being pushed out by Ford, but other models, like the Bronco Sport, still get updates. After checking my Bluetooth phone connectivity, I can see this unit is full of previously paired phones, including your mom's. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. After deleting a couple phones from the list, I successfully paired my S22. After seeing more of the saved phones, including what seems like possibly someone's ex-girlfriend, I decided to just do a factory reset. With being satisfied that the hardware is functioning properly, I screw it back down in place, then test out the Android Auto. So much nicer than before. Having Sync 4 on the Bronco really spoiled me. After adding my home Wi-Fi network to the system, it was time to manually update the firmware. This program is called Sync3 Updater, and with this and the USB stick, I'm able to download and flash the drive with the latest Sync3 software Ford still has available, including maps if my unit had built-in navigation. Once I tell it what version I currently have, I simply plug in the USB drive, select it in the menu, confirm my market and which version I'd like to install, nav or non-nav, and then it's almost ready to write. A warning about 2022 modules comes up. I'm wondering if these newer ones maybe use an encrypted bootloader and are unable to manually flash like my 2019 unit. After confirming the warning, it writes to the USB drive and then it's ready to go into the car. Stick the drive into the console USB socket and power up the radio. This initial step saves an XML configuration file to the drive, which you load back into the Sync3 updater program. This time, instead of formatting, it'll now download and save all the necessary Sync3 update packages to the USB drive. Pull the drive back out, plug it back into the car, Turn on the ignition and it automatically starts to copy over the install packages. They say this can take some time, so I decide to go for a short drive while the updater does its thing. It probably took 10 minutes to finish, but once it did, I turned around and came back home using Android Auto. And a quick check to the software page, and now I have the latest Sync 3.4 software in my eight-year-old Fiesta. So just like that, a pretty simple and straightforward upgrade, but a much needed one. The unit come from a Wreckers in Michigan that I found on eBay, and I made an offer at $240 US. With $25 for shipping and $35 in tax, it come to about $420 Canadian. Not a cheap upgrade, but money well spent. A lot of the auto records are onto the sync upgrades nowadays, and I think they price their hardware accordingly now. Still much cheaper than buying new. Well, I hope you found this video entertaining and useful. Consider subscribing to the channel and tune in for future episodes right here on The Lonely Overlander, and we'll see you next time.